Thank you. Um, didn't expect such a crowd. I'm sure everyone's just come in for a seat to get a rest. <laughs> um, it's nice to be here today. Um, as Gillian said, I'm um, Head of Commercial and Procurement Service at the Council just now. And what I wanted to do was to give you a bit of an insight to the Council, tell you about the challenges that we face and our plans for tackling those. And also wanted to talk about how procurement fits with that journey and in turn what that means for suppliers. So I was at an event last week with colleagues from Scotland Excel and there was a session on data um, and it was really thought provoking about how data shapes what we, what we do, what we plan for. So I thought it would be um, a good start today to talk about the data that shapes the council and the decisions and the plans that we have. The Edinburgh by Numbers is an annual publication that the city publishes. It compares Edinburgh with Scotland, um, the other cities of Scotland and some cities across the UK outside of London. So what that tells us that in the 10 years up to 2021, Edinburgh's population grew by 10.2%. So just over half a million residents within the city. And that's across all age groups, which kind of bucks the national trend. In Scotland, the growth was 3.4, so you can see how far ahead Edinburgh is. There's been large increases in older population as well, both in Edinburgh and in Scotland. And overall, population in Edinburgh is expected to grow by 50,000 in the next 20 years. So that's quite a lot for us to tackle and a big demand on our services. Edinburgh has the highest life expectancy in Scottish cities where a woman will live to an average age of 82 and a man to 78. However, there's conflicting information there as well because 19% of children are in poverty in the city and life expectancy for a boy who's born in a less affluent area of the city could be at least 20 years less. So we've got quite a bit of work to do there when it comes to poverty. 81% of our population is working in employment um, and most of the inactives outside of that are either students or caregivers. Our wages are higher on average, but so are our costs, and many of our residents are struggling with cost of living. In the last three years, there's been an increase of 191% of people who are in work and claiming universal credit. Local businesses are doing well in the city. On average, 40% survive the first five years, which is the strongest of any city outside of London. And despite that, we have also had 370 business closures since 2020. And as you know, there are continuing challenges for trading, including in faith, inflation, interest and energy, which would have been covered earlier today. But Edinburgh is a living wage city as well. There are 630 Edinburgh-based businesses who are living wage accredited, and 30 of those signed up in the first three months of this, this year. The Council works with Edinburgh Partnership. This is a partnership which includes community groups, includes pub public and private sector and third sector organisations, working together to achieve the ambitions for the city. They've set themselves a target to increase that living wage accreditation to over 900 over the next few years. The council itself is committed to delivering 25,000 new homes and delivering 20 minute neighbourhoods. The Fountain Bridge development was in the press just the last week and hopefully you have seen that. And um, it's about having good places to live, work and grow. Our current budget Sorry, our current budget um, is actually a Liberal Democrat budget that was set this year. And whilst there are investments there for our roads and our parks and also flood prevention over the next year, there are huge challenges as well when it comes to our budget. And over the next four years, the council needs to find another 90 million to deliver its ambitions. So that's the context of how the council, what the council needs to deal with and why it set up its council business plan. The business plan has just been approved. Uh, that will cover the council ambition over the next five years. 
Um, it will be used to guide budget and investment decisions and ensure that our spend is focused on the activities that will have the biggest impact. So it's split into the three priorities, addressing poverty, addressing well-being and good places to live, and also a net zero by 2030. Each of those priorities is underpinned by 10 outcomes which we will deliver and they will sit alongside the Council's statutory duties to provide education, caring for vulnerable citizens, etc. But the plan will extend beyond those and look at Edinburgh's individual operations. The priorities are interlinked and interdependent. They connect to other major strategies and policies across the Council, including our own procurement strategy. It's a move away, um, looking through the lens of climate and social justice, turning away from the traditional concept of people and the environment working towards gains in the economy, to an economy that serves the people and the environment that they live in. So the Edinburgh Partnership is all about community wealth building, which you would have probably heard quite a lot about today. So on a practical level, what does that mean for us? So within procurement, that means supporting co-production activity, working with people that use our services, the suppliers as well, and also third sector partners that contribute. Looking at community benefits and how we can use community benefits to support our citizens. Looking at fair work practices to ensure that people are receiving the real living wage and helping our small and medium sized enterprises with contract opportunities and to keep the wealth within the community. So our sustainable procurement strategy uh, was published in 2020. Um, and given the council has just published its council business plan, we'll need to go back to the drawing board and review that and make sure it's still current. Our team are here today and we're happy to, to listen to your views on how we can improve some of these areas in our strategy. But the focus is on meeting the council objectives. Fair work very much there and supporting businesses is very much there. So in terms of procurement, how are we doing? So our third party spend over the last year, 874,000. I can already tell you that this year it's gone up even further. We're sitting probably over 900 million in the last operational year. All operational spend across the council comes through my central team. So we have the ability to look at what the council is buying and hopefully be able to influence in that in some way. Most of the new contracts that were up there um, came from just four contracts. So there is a real mix of very large frameworks and, and also very small businesses as well. Sorry. SMEs um, were either awarded a place in a contract or a council framework. Um, about 69% in 21-22, which was up from 65% the year before. So we're trying to push that percentage even higher. I think Scottish Government spoke about the national figure being about 76%. So we've got a bit of work to do there. Our spend with SMEs remains around 50% and we'd like to see that increase as well. So if you get any ideas about how we can do that and how we can work better with you, we'd like to hear from you. But what do we ask of you if you're bidding for council work? Well, I've laid out what the council priorities are and we can't deliver those on our own. We need our suppliers to support us. We want suppliers that share our values, um, things that are important to us, paying real living wage, as I said already. We've got ambitions to improve the accreditation levels there. And um, in the last year, 87% of the suppliers we contracted with had committed to paying the real living wage. But the council is now mandating that in tenders, um, so you will see a change in, in the information we're asking of you. Fair work is particularly being focused now within the council business plan. Our members would like to see us focus on gender pay and, and other inequalities within fair work. So we're interested in understanding how we can tackle that together. 
Community benefits are also key to achieving our outcomes. Suppliers have been working with Edinburgh Guarantee and our JET programme to help people in a, into apprenticeships and into jobs. In 2021, 149 local jobs were created as a direct result of a council contract. There were community enhancements delivered through our contractors as well, about £300,000 worth of those. And local charities were supported to the tune of 112,000. Things like the food banks and fuel poverty vouchers have become quite significant as well. We also recognise that you will be changing and adapting your own business in regards to net zero and seeing what you can do to reduce your carbon footprint. Council has ambitions to, to do that as well, so we'll be looking for you to submit some carbon reduction plans with your tenders as well where it's relevant for our priorities. This is just a brief summary of, of how you can become a supplier within the, the Edinburgh Council. We have a stand today as well, stand number seven, if you haven't been to see us, it's just, just over the side there. Um, and you can download all of those details onto a QR code from the stand. And finally, I thought I would finish with letting you know what some of our current opportunities are or those that are about to be published in the next few weeks and months. So hopefully there's something there to, to interest you. And that's me. Thank you very much.